let's go and have a look and how how this is actually working. This is this is a live demo, and the, the sample I have here is based on kind of a banking world. So we have accounts and customers and cards and that kind of stuff. And we can already see here we're in a tracker web application. So I'm I'm actually starting at the end here just to show you the end result, which make, makes clear some of the, the main benefits of our tool. We're looking at the tracker web application. We're looking at the list of events that occurred during the last iteration of the entire migration. A couple of things to note. Here you have the business objects, the account and the card and the customer. They are defined in the target map. We're going to have a look at this uh, in a moment, but they pop up here in the tracker. Up here, we have a notion of uh, separation of partitioning of data. And you have to imagine in, in this sample, we have two banks that is currently running at a banking system provider. So they are tenants in a, in a common system at one provider of banking systems, and they have now got a better offer from another provider to get to, to run their systems at a new provider. And they are pulled together, so they share the cost of the migration. So in this one migration project, we are actually migrating two separate legal entities in the same migration project across to the new provider. So we have authorized separation of data and authorization in place. So users from one legal entity cannot see the migration results or the data from the other legal entity. So that's just a, an extra little spice uh, on our tool that they can separate the data like that and also authorize users to what they can see. The main thing here is, of course, the list of events that we have here. And uh, we have not like, just five here because it's, it's, it's a small sample. And over on the side, the message describes what, what is this about. You can see that the message has placeholders in it. So the actual data from the migration are kind of kept out of this aggregated view. So you get a top ag aggregation that, that just counts how many occurrences of this event, like frequency, some, something is unknown. Of these ones, we have 1,609 occurrences of this event. It is also only touching 1,609 accounts. Bearing in mind that we are migrating hierarchies here, you can have events that are being fired down in the, in, the, in the hierarchy on some child, of which there can be many. And that's why you can have a count, you can have, the, you can have an event that's been fired more than one time for a given account. So this is why these numbers can be different, right? but in this case, they're not. Then there's a, an event code that, that is a, an easy reference back to the mapping, so you can see exactly when the mapping does this happen. And then there is a severity. In this case, it means that some child of the account business object is being rejected because of this event. It does not flow any further, but the account as a whole will go on. Another severity is the reject route. But that means no matter where in the entire hierarchy of a given account this happens, the, uh, the entire account will stop in its tracks and will not flow onto the target system. And then there's uh, other levels like warning, information, and error. They do not have any actual consequence in our tool, but you can use them in a migration project to denote several uh, or different uh, levels of severity of, any, of something you let pass through. It can be informational, so this is kind of just a service message. You can say it's a warning, and you say you need to be aware of this, but your target system will probably function all right, even if this happens. And then there can be an error where you can use to say, we're going to let it through. It will go into the target system, but you need to go into the target system after the migration to fix something in order to get to, to, get to the end point of this. Now, here we have an event that says interest type something does not exist on product, product something else in bank something else again, right? And if I click on the count, 5,504, and I'll just have to wake up because, uh, well, it's been left alone for too long. Here, now we have merged the actual data that was produced 
by the, the migration into the text, right? So we just stepped one level down in aggregation. And we can see even though we had 5,404, we only have a very small set of unknown values that it's actually complaining about. And in many places in the traffic, you can then export this. So, so this could maybe, maybe as a guess, this could be a configuration problem in the target system that some product or interest type is missing. Then you could export this and attach it to a mail and send it up to, oh, to somebody and say, can you please uh, create these interest types in the configuration of the target system? That could be a resolution of this event. Go down one more level. We get a list of the 922 accounts that fired this exact event. And I click one more time. We get to one account. So now we're looking at just this one account and we get a, a complete vision of what happened in the migration for this one account. So we have a list of the events and this time, in this instance, it's just firing this event I0019 twice. And <coughs> you get some information of this specific event. Up here, you get some useful information about the account itself. You can see what was the key in the source system for this account. You can see the key that the migration operates with. Down here, you can see some interdependencies. You can see that this account is depending on a customer. It's probably the customer that owns the account. You can also see it's dependent on another account. So my guess is that this account serves as account that receives the interest of another account. Maybe, but this account is just depending on these two items and there's no items that depends on this account. Up here, clicking here, we can see the data that was extracted from the st staging tables by the source engine in order to migrate this one account. And here we see the hierarchy in play. So we have the account up here, which is the top level. And then we have the children of the account down here. There's a child here called interest. And if we go down, oh, I scrolled here, interest. And interest itself has a child again that is now a grandchild of account that's called interest line, right? So, so a hierarchy of, of data here. And for each of them, looking at the source XML, as we call it, the things that was extracted from the staging database, we then get from here on down the data that was extracted at this level for the account top node here, the root. We went into a source, a table in the, in the staging database that was called account. And then we also went into something called translate product types. We went into customer and we went into client additional and pulled out these fields. And these were the data that served as a basis from the staging database to migrate the account. And you get the same for each node in the level. You can see what data was pulled out for this occurrence of the interest in this account and so on down the hierarchy. If I go back, this one, the same structure, the same hierarchy, but what we're looking at now is what did the source engine produce? So this is the result of the source engine that is uh, that has received the data we looked at before that was extracted and then it mapped, it executed on that and it produced this result. This is what flows into the target engine. And the last one, this is what the target engine then produced. And here we have again the same hierarchy, the account on the top and the entities means that the account can deliver several rows or several sets of data to the target system. In this case, it's delivering something to the account uh, in the target system. It's also delivering something to some called ACC ID relation. And here's another one for ACC IP relation. Actually, there's two of those because there's another one down here. So this is the end result. This is what the migration produced for this one account with all its dependent uh, descendants. Right. If you're sitting, if you're a business user now, you're involved in this and you're involved in the UAT, 
and you're sitting looking at a test instance of the target system and you're looking at an account and you're you're what something you're, you're wondering about something you see you want to know what happened in the migration for this account chances are that you can see the account number when you're looking in the target system so if you have the account number you find the account you're looking at this fast that's it now now you have complete vision of whatever happened in the tag uh, in the migration for the account that you're testing at the moment all the data that was extracted all the data that flowed into the target system all the issues and events that might have occur occurred along the way and that might give you a good support in understanding why you're seeing what you're seeing in the target system um, another thing in the tracker I'll just hit back here is we, we, we drill down right to the single account by clicking the numbers over here if I click the text instead I get into a set another area where we have a, a workflow around these events so you can you can assign the events to different responsible users you can give it a state right that you have resolved it it's uh, it has you said it was resolved, but it occurred again. That means it's a regression and so on. At the end of the day, of course, before you go live, you want all your events to be either resolved or accepted, right? If they're accepted, it means that the users say, it's okay, this event occurs, we will deal with it, we can go live. And then you get like, a, uh, you can comment, so you can communicate the migration team and the business user involved can have a, a comment history so you can collaborate in the resolutions of, of, of events and help each other out. And then you have like a history that, that just denotes whatever happened to this event over the course of the migration project. The last thing I want to show is over here, when we get into the studio, you will see we have something we call value sets. And, and that is something that is used by our tool for uh, transformation and validation purposes. And, and you, can, you can have uh, a couple of different types of value sets in the mapping. And one type is what we call translation. And if you mark a value set to be translation, it means it will pop up here in the tracker. And you can ask your users to populate the data the value set of data. So this is very typically something you would use to map from legacy system code values to something that is known by the target system. In, in this case, it's something about a source bank unit that's being mapped to a target bank unit, right? So the source bank unit two must map to city. So this kind of thing, these transformation tables that can get a little bit out of hand, because they're being mailed backwards and forwards between a lot of different users. They reside in many different folders. <coughs> That's not the case here. The truth we all agree on is just here in the tracker web application, and that's it. 